Hey there, Ghostbusters fans. This is Aaron back with some more updates on my Spirit Life Size Proton Pack with a GP Star Electronics upgrade. Today I wanted to flip this around to the backside and just talk about the electronics and what I've done versus other things that you can do and uh, just kind of go from there. So just a, uh, a quick look at the back here. This is the, the stock back of the uh, Spirit Life Size Pack. And you'll immediately notice that there is a something going on up there. That's a uh, talent cell battery pack. And you can see that it is actually bolted in here. And it has its power switch. And then it's got a, a USB and 12 volt connector coming out of it. And those are to power the amplifier and main pack board and all the lighting. And basically if I want to charge this cell, I can just pop this guy out and then plug the charging cord right into that. I might make a more convenient way to do things. Um, if I do add an Alice frame to this, then I will definitely add some uh, charging ports and things to the back and, and maybe change things up a little bit more. But for now, I'm kind of trying to get away without doing an Alice frame. Um, just to save some money and to keep the weight down. Um, and of course, the important thing that you see here is the Hasbro uh, 1984 wand and it's uh, got the GP star electronics inside so yeah you can't see that but it's got a, a three-quarter inch loom hose and uh, it's got a few little minor upgrades that I've done so far to it which are just installing these clip light covers to kind of make it more accurate I still want to do this hat light and then uh, replace that with a hat light and a real switch um, and then this terminates into a uh, multi-pin connector here, which this is a UXL 7-pin um, connector. Most people use a 4-pin connector. And the reason most people use a 4-pin connector is because that's really all you need. You just need a line for power, for ground, for transmit, and receive for your serial connection so that the two microprocessors in each board can talk to each other. Um, you can actually fairly easily unscrew this. It's a nice metal piece. It's about $10 to buy this connector, but I have seven connections and that was just to add some future proofing in case I wanted to run more wiring back and forth. But you can just see it looks like that. This guy looks like this. It fits in the stock hole and uh, yeah, it just kind of has a nice positive lock and then you have to screw it in. So, and it kind of looks military-esque or, you know, aircraft-ish. I think it is kind of an aircraft type connector. So going into this pack, let's take a look. Let's pop it back off. And what you'll immediately see is a mess of wires. Yes. Um, so like I said, here's the talent cell. This is actually a talent cell battery holder that I found on Thingiverse and just printed it up and then drilled some holes and bolted in. Works perfect. Um, then just kind of coming out, you can see I've got my wiring wrapped in some mesh because I have a lot of car stereo stuff that I've done in the past. And then you can see right here in the power cell area, what's going on is there is a speaker in a custom bracket that I designed. And that bracket actually holds a two and a half inch Dayton uh, speaker. And it, it's a right angle bracket. So it goes down and bends over and actually holds a uh, strip of LEDs. And these are the LEDs I use for the power cell, which are basically, it's two, eight LED strips joined together and then I actually desoldered the last LED so I have 15 LEDs to make it more accurate and I did that versus buying the actual GP Star Fruto LEDs and that was just because I had those on hand from doing other Arduino projects and I wanted to save some money and I like doing things myself so yeah the bracket actually holds the speaker and that LED in place in the stock mounts but it does Kind of, you know, wiggle a little bit, so I did use some hot glue to kind of tack the top up here so this is all firm. And if you swing around to the right-hand side, you can see, it's hard to really tell, but there are slits that I cut with a Dremel really kind of carefully. I did make a little bit of gouges, but that allows the audio to come through fairly well. Um, it's not quite as crystal clear as I'd like, but you know what? Honestly, it's pretty good. So moving on down to the audio section. Uh, you can see the speaker actually comes down and is wired into this, which is a GP Star amplification board. And uh, you can use, really with the GP Star, you can use any amp board you want. But their own amp board wasn't bad. I think I got it on sale for around $25 to $30. And what makes it more unique than the stuff that you get off the shelf is that it has a 
um, you know, a bunch of headers for five volts power and also 12 volts. So if you need additional five volt, 12 volt power through your pack for other types of add-ons, it gives you that. Um, I believe it's a like 15 watt per channel amp. And then it has this uh, ground loop isolator so that when you have audio coming from the other source, it actually has a ground loop isolator in line with it to get rid of any of that weird hum or annoying whine that you might get um, from having a ground loop. So that's a nice thing to add on because if you buy an amp and then buy a ground loop isolator, you're probably spending close to the same amount of money. Uh, GP Store actually provides a file for a tray to hold this. So I actually printed that up, glued it down, and that keeps it nice and in place. So going on down to the meat of the whole operations, the things that runs the show, this is where I deviate from GP Star's main uh, setup. And that's because typically GP Star gives you a board that's designed for a HasLab pack, right? And you can use it with the Spirit Pack. It comes with, they have like a little uh, cyclotron lid bypass connector that you'll need because you don't have a cyclotron lid sensor in this pack um, but I did my own thing so if you kind of zoom in here I guess we'll just go and take a look here and what you have is that is an Arduino 2560 um, kind of clone board and it has a USB-C connector or no a USB micro connector and basically it is wired up to just a um, you know a solderable breadboard or as they call those and all that basically does is it's breaking out all the connections on that Arduino board to nice uh, JST connectors that make it easier for me to kind of keep wiring and, and troubleshooting and, and things fairly simple. So you have different connectors that run out uh, this. Basically, the uh, setup, they use an Arduino. Their, their own pack board uses the same Arduino, and that's why they support do-it-yourselfers. Because really, that's all it is. It's just a really nice Arduino board with a bunch of connectors, capacitors, uh, transistors, and things. So you can add things like smoke kits and, you know, fans and other things, which honestly, I'm doing a fairly basic setup. That's why I did this, because I just didn't need to spend the extra money. These do-it-yourself Arduino things are pretty cheap. I, again, I had a lot of this stuff on hand. Um, I wired up this switch, and this is just the mode selector to change it between 1984, 89, Afterlife, Frozen Empire. And I, I just put it in there for mainly for testing. Um, I probably should punch it through the back at some point, but you can actually change the mode from the wand or you can actually do it through Wi-Fi. And so if you look kind of what's going on here is we, the Arduino actually has a bunch of serial ports that come out of it. And this guy actually has basically three serial ports. And one of these goes to the wand and I've labeled that wand. And you can kind of see this goes into this wire bundle along with power and that goes out to that connector. And that goes to the wand. And then this other port is labeled Wi-Fi, and that goes to this other little module here. And that is a ESP32, and that's just transmit or send and receive um, data lines from this Arduino to this box. And this and this guy basically just gives you the ability to run their uh, pack attenuator firmware, which allows you to essentially just have Wi-Fi connection to turn on and off your pack and set all the options. It's a nice thing. I have a ton of these boards again on hand from other projects, so why not? And then really kind of the uh, the secret sauce that makes the GP Star unique to their solution versus anybody else on the market is their custom soundboard. And they're making their own soundboard now, which is this little guy. And they also support the uh, Robert Sonics or SparkFun, I think it's called, uh, that was it, Wave Shield or something like that, or Wave... It's basically a sound playing card that can support playing multiple sounds all at the same time. And if you've done any research on the GP Star versus the other guys, that's what makes these guys unique, is that it basically can layer the sounds. Rather than their MP3 player playing one sound at a time when you're doing something, it can play like, I don't know how many, up to like 30 or something different sounds at once. I mean, in most of the modes, it's probably only doing five to 10 different sounds at the same time which is still pretty crazy. It means you could literally be having music playing at the same time that the pack hum is going and the, the firing sequence is going and and the little beeps are going and all these different sound effects that, that are going on. But it, it really makes it immersive. It makes it really, really impressive. Um, just a really neat piece of hardware. Um, and that's kind of the expensive part, I mean, compared to some of the other things. It's not bad. I mean, I think it's like 50 to $60. And that connects again, a simple connector that's serial and power 
to the uh, board here and it actually has some terminals for speakers on board which you can actually use its onboard amp i think it's like two and a half watts or something like that so it's not a lot of power um if you have a big speaker which that really isn't so i probably could have gotten away with that um and then it has line out which that's just plugged into this cable here that runs up and plugs into line in on the amp and essentially that's just what's feeding the audio signal so the microcontroller is just talking to the soundboard to make the sounds, and it's talking to the wand, and it's talking to the Wi-Fi. And then the important part, of course, is the lighting, and that comes out to this little header that I've wired up, and I put a capacitor in line with it to kind of uh, smooth out the LEDs just in case that's a problem. But these are just addressable LEDs, and that's the really cool thing about their setup is they use WS2812B addressable LEDs, which means you just wire them all together and then the uh the pack can talk to all of these kind of individually really what goes on is the first thing in the sequence is the 15 leds for the um <clears throat> power cell and then that comes back to the board and then i have another output here for it's uh what the heck is that here <laughs> trying to find it you know it's like it's all wired up in here but basically, yeah, oh, that's this this yellow wire is the, the, the data line that comes off the power cell and then into the cyclotron LEDs. And these are actually kind of unique in that I've, I've made these myself, but the GP Star kit, um, they'll sell you Fruto LEDs, which usually come in uh, five or nine LED variants to give you kind of like, they give you like an arc to give you that simulated ring. Um, they also support ring LED. The problem is most 30 mil or 130 millimeter ring LEDs are like a slightly too small for the spirit cyclotron spacing. Um, if you have the uh, Taco Billy cyclotron mod on your spirit pack, then you can get away with it. And that's one nice thing because it's literally just one thing to wire. Again, I had a bunch of these single pixels, which you can kind of see. There, uh, I had a ton of these on hand, so I'm like, you know, I've got like literally like a hundred of these things. So I was like, well, I should just use these. So I designed these little cups as reflectors that hold the single pixel LEDs in, and they hold them in kind of like an arc. So you can kind of see my print has this arch in it, and I basically did that to kind of simulate a ring. And they, then I just literally glued each pixel into these, and then I wired them all together. So again. This is probably way more complicated than a lot of people get into these kits because they're not going to go to the level of DIY that I do um, just because you don't really, you know, you don't have to. And it's a lot, lot less intimidating if you buy their the Fruto LEDs. But again, I wanted to save some money since I already had this stuff on hand and I, and I like making stuff. So it was just kind of a challenge. So really, that is it as far as that is how all the electronics are wired up. And it's really a, an amazing setup. I mean, I, th I think it's fantastic. It works really well. It's really fun to switch between 84 and 89 and, and Afterlife and Frozen Empire mode. I particularly like that I can run this in 89 mode, which a lot of kits don't have an 89 mode. And, and that's because this kind of designed as a Ghostbusters 2 pack at this point, just because I have the GB2 ribbon cable and the GB2 iron ion, ion arm stand. Uh, kind of a setup so uh you know if I want to kind of stick to like the theme I can do that but I actually kind of like the Frozen Empire sound effects better there's more fun there's a lot more going on you get the more spinning ring and stuff so but it's cool that you can do that you know so you can later on you can update and upgrade and do things so really I just hope this helps people kind of get an idea of what kind of madness that I've done and it maybe kind of inspires you to do the same but there are a lot of other kits out there that do similar things that could cost you less, could cost you more. I think the GP Star is probably the most expensive if you buy like all of their pre-made parts and wiring kits and everything. Um, a lot of people really like it. I mean, they work great with the Hasbro and HasLab stuff. Um, and what spurred this all off, honestly, was I hooked this wand up originally. I, I liked having the wand and the spirit pack together. But you didn't have any synchronization between the sounds in here and the sounds in there and, and the lighting. It just, you know, nothing really talked to each other. I wanted more. And uh, ultimately, I was trying to create more on my own as a tinkerer and, and trying to set up Arduinos and things to, to talk between the two. And 
I actually unfortunately shorted out the uh, the main board in here and when I did that I'm like great well that's the end of that that wand right I mean that that circuit board drives everything and without that that wand was basically a brick it did nothing at that point so I'm like well if I want to be able to use that wand I need to either find a replacement circuit board or an electronics for it or I just need to toss the wand buy another wand and then try my experiments some more but at that point I'm like you know what new wand is like $125 their wand replacement boards are around 60 something dollars and then you start adding up this other pieces and and i'm in probably right around 200 doing it all myself but it's not to me it's not that much more than buying a second wand which i would have had to do and i end up with a way better solution than what was uh stock or you know kind of chained together and the fun part is, is later on, I could put the same connector on another pack. I could make a second pack and I could swap the wand. I could make a, you know, I could buy another wand and mod it out to be Frozen Empire style and have that swappable. So if I want to do that, I can do that. And uh, that's pretty cool. But yeah, uh, I'll stop droning on here. <laughs> it's kind of excited, but uh, thanks for watching.